Hey guys, so a lot of us are in lockdown at the moment doing our best to perform our normal work duties from home. Now, a big part of that struggle is trying to maintain a level of professionalism, I guess, when we're trying to do things like teleconferencing and, you know, video conferencing, all those sorts of things that we would normally be doing in the office in meeting rooms we're now having to do from home via Zoom or Skype or whatever it is, as well as people like me who are content creators trying to record video at home with all sorts of noise going on in the background. My kids are at home from school and yeah it's just an absolute mess and to be honest with you guys I've been having to sort of basically sleep all day and work all night to get my videos done while the rest of the family's asleep it's the only way I've been able to do it without chaos and noise in the background so when I saw that Nvidia have released a brand new piece of software that gives some crazy results with noise filtering I just had to check it out now there's a bunch of videos already floating around on YouTube uh, Barnacle's Nogasm has actually done a fantastic one where he actually brought in leaf blowers and all sorts of crazy things to test out just to see exactly what the limits of this software are and I, I suggest you check that out I'll link it in the description below because it will absolutely blow your mind but the purpose of this video is more sort of to show what it performs like in a real world situation now obviously I'm sitting in a driving simulator here I've got all sorts of things like motion platform and wind simulation and all of those things add noise to the background when I'm driving so we're going to test out and see exactly what sort of an impact this has for my particular usage case as well as for things like video conferencing as well where we're just using voice and yeah basically just test it out we'll test out my lapel mic as well as the road broadcaster and basically give my impressions on whether this is something that's worthwhile installing so we'll start off by showing you the installation process now it is advertised as rtx compatible software and nvidia do actually have a little bit of code inside the installation package that stops it from installing on anything other than an rtx or a 20 series card but fortunately there is a way around that i'm going to show you how to do that today as well and get this installed on your 10 series card so enough rambling let's get going so first of all, we're gonna jump onto the RTX voice setup page. I'll link it in the description below for you. And you can see here you also wanna make sure you're updated to the latest version of the Nvidia drivers too. So make sure you've done that if you haven't already. The link is here as well. And then just click on download the app. And if you have an RTX card, you can just simply run through the installation. Make sure you read the agreement. Click on agree and continue. You can see it installs the driver and the program. Click close and the program will automatically open. So here we're presented with an input and an output device. So the input device is your microphone device and then the output device is your speaker device. So you can actually apply the effects to the output as well. We're obviously not gonna be doing that for the purposes of this video. It doesn't really make sense to do it in the context that we're doing. So we're gonna click on the drop down menu under input device and select our USB interface for our audio. So in my case, it's USB audio codec and then we can click on remove background noise from my microphone. So now we have a slider to adjust the percentage and that's literally the only adjustment that we have here. It's all done by machine learning and AI within your graphics card. So it's sort of learning and listening to what sort of sounds are being made and then adapting on the fly. So there's no data being sent back to a server or anything like that. And then I'll quickly just show you how to set up in OBS Studio as well as Discord as well. Now the process is pretty much the same for any program, but just select your microphone, click on settings and properties and change the device from the microphone input to the newly created microphone NVIDIA RTX voice input. Click OK. And it's as simple as that. So for Discord, we click on voice and video. And again, just select our input device as the NVIDIA RTX voice input device. So for those with 10 series cards, run the installer exactly the same as we did with the RTX cards. Now this time you're gonna get a nasty message basically telling you to get stuff because you don't have an RTX card, but that's okay. Just click on close. And then we're gonna to wanna to press Control Shift Escape to open up Task Manager. Click on File, Run New Task, type in Notepad, and make sure you click on the box that gives it administrator privileges. Click on File and Open. Navigate to C Drive, Temp, NV RTX voice, then NVAFX, click on all files and open up the RTX voice.mvi file. So then we want to locate the section that says constraints, delete that entire part and click file and save. So close that off now. And then you want to navigate to your C drive again in your explorer window. Again, temp nvrtx and run the setup file from here and this time it will let you go all the way through the 
so what we have here is a pretty typical scenario in my studio. So we've got the kids in the kitchen in the next room preparing dinner with my wife. And if I shut up for a moment here, you'll be able to hear them in the background. There you go. So they're, they're going away doing their usual thing in the background. But you can see the noise floor there looking at the graph. If I shut up again. You can see how high that noise floor is sitting just when I'm silent here. Now in terms of other things, like obviously you can hear the PC running in the side there. We've got things like paddle shifters, which you'll hear clicking as we drive. And then we've got also my other wheel here as well, which is a really noisy one. So that sort of would normally be sitting about there. Now I have to have my microphone in this position which is quite close to the steering wheel, obviously, because my voice needs to project into it. But uh, yeah, look, then there's other things as well, like my shifter on the side here. I've got my motion platform as well. So we'll switch that on. There you go. And you can still hear the kids in the background. And then I've also got a pedestal fan here beside me as well, which I don't normally have running when I'm recording a video because it's too noisy. So we'll switch that on too. So you can see there now my noise floor is pretty much at 50% of my full volume when I'm talking. So let's now turn on this noise filter under a sort of worst case scenario kind of situation and see how much of a difference it makes. Okay, so I can't hear anything now. But, okay, that's crazy. So the, the noise floor now has gone absolutely to zero, even with all of this noise going on. And I look, let me switch off the filter again. That's the fan. Back on again. So you can hear a little bit of talking in the background maybe, but let me switch off this fan again quickly. Okay, so fan's off now. So we'll switch off the filter again. So there's the kids again in the background. <laughs> Back on again. And let's do some shifting on the shifters now. So it's not picking that up at all. Like even if I'm talking, you probably can hear it a little bit in the background. It's hard to tell through headphones. But even with the noisy wheel, let's have a try that one. So it's picking it up very occasionally there, but that's, how do they do that? That is absolutely insane. So just quickly with the filter off as well, I just want to show you what it sounds like with typing. So typing away there. And then we'll switch the filter back on. So with no talking. Absolutely nothing. And then if I'm talking over the top as well, I, I'm not hearing anything in the headphones. I don't know whether you guys can hear that a little bit, but I'm mashing away on the keyboard here and absolutely nothing. So, all right, let's jump into a game now and actually see what it sounds like over the top of game audio as well. Okay, so we'll start off here with the filter turned off just so you have a base point for comparison. So you'll hear the motion platform running, you'll hear the wind sim running, you'll hear me changing gears in particular. That's going to be the most annoying thing you'll hear. You should also hear the kids talking away with their mother in the background too. But let's head out. Now, one of the things that I normally have to do as well is uh, crank the volume of my um, game audio up a little bit more than I would like to and make my voice a little bit too quiet just to sort of mask out all the other noises that are going on in the background. So what I've done here as well is I've kind of lowered my game audio just a touch just to make it a little bit more where I would like it to be in an ideal world. So you will hear more noise going on in the background than you would normally hear in one of my videos. That's the reason for that. You can hear the gear changes going on. So filter on. Okay, and again, I can see that noise floor has dropped completely to zero, which is a good sign. So let's get going. So I'm not seeing my gear shifts on the VU meter. So 
see if we can embarrass ourselves again. Almost lost it. Going into the wall. <laughs> Cold tires in this car are really a handful. Go over the crest. Touch on the brakes here. All right. So let's now go and try the uh, presentation microphone. We'll clip on the lapel and see what that sounds like. Okay, so we're all wired up with the Shure wireless lapel mic now, which is the mic that I normally use when I'm presenting to camera. Now what I'm doing is I'm standing in the worst possible spot inside the studio. So right opposite the back wall where there's heaps of splashback and heaps of reverberation. So you can hear there's quite a lot of echo in my voice right now, but you can also hear all the background noise. You can hear the kids banging around and yelling and screaming, reading books and stuff. You can hear the PC with the fans and stuff. So it's just generally quite a high level of noise in the room. And that makes it very difficult in post-production to sort of try to bring that out of the sound without deadening the voice as well. So you can imagine it's quite difficult under normal circumstances, but let's just be quiet for a second here. You can hear the background noise quickly. So you can hear the kids. Yeah, there's quite a bit, quite a bit going on, but let's switch on the filter now. Okay, let's try that. So again, I can see the noise floor has gone completely to zero as I expected, but let's have a listen. Pretty much absolutely silent. I could hear Jill just for a bit there as she was talking to the kids, but I mean, that's, that's with the doors open as well. So if I shut those doors, then uh, yeah, I, I don't think it's going to be a problem at all. So this really is honestly a massive game changer for me. I think this is going to be the thing that's going to enable me to be able to shoot video whenever I want, regardless of what the kids and uh, Jill are doing. Oftentimes, she has to actually go out of the house when I'm filming something because it's just too noisy or you know just too inconvenient to try and keep the kids quiet while I'm trying to film something over and over again. So this is going to be a massive game changer for us, and I really do hope that it helps you guys out as well. Uh, yeah, look, really impressed. I had a listen back as well of the game audio when we were playing iRacing, and I think the main difference there is that you just didn't get the little noises like the motion platform and the gear changes in particular. The general noise floor level wasn't really a problem because the game audio kind of steps up over the top of that anyway. But yeah, just, just not having that, that gear changing and all those clicks and bangs and movements and stuff is really cool. So before we finish up here, just a couple of other things to quickly note for you guys. So because this is using resources on your graphics card, it will have an impact on the overall performance that you're getting. So if you're playing a game and streaming and recording at the same time using this technology, then it is gonna have a performance hit. Now, Gamers Nexus did some benchmarking today, actually, they posted a video up. So I'll link in the description below for you guys to that actually went through and tested a range of different cars in the 10 series as well as the 20 series and had a look at the performance hit there. So it was sort of, you know, in on a game where you were getting 80 frames, it was maybe like a 10 frame hit in most scenarios, somewhere around there. But check that video out for all the details. Now, the other thing I wanted to note here as well is that this isn't sending any data away for processing and then coming back again. So all the processing is being done on the card installed in your machine itself. So it's not, you know, sending your sending your voice up to the cloud and then, you know, giving Google your data or anything like that, NVIDIA your data. Nobody's listening, nothing like that, at least as far as we're aware. Uh, NVIDIA have been pretty clear from what I understand that all the processing is happening locally and it would need to be to happen in real time with no delay as we're seeing it's working. So just to note that as well. But yeah, guys, hopefully this is something that will be helpful for you. It's definitely a game changer for me and I don't use that term lightly. Uh, there's been a lot of frustration in this studio over the last year around noise levels and you know acoustics and stuff like that. And I think this is going to be a big step in the right direction and certainly free up my kids and my wife to have a little bit more freedom around the place when I'm trying to film. So it's going to be awesome and I really hope it helps you guys out too. So leave a thumbs up if this video has been helpful for you and if you've enjoyed it, make sure you're subbed and hit the notification bell too so you don't miss future videos. And yeah, guys, that's it. I'll see you again soon. Bye.